The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you Today's Word for July 20th, 2018. It's a Friday morning. I love closing out the week strong, heading into the weekend strong. I'm teaching a series from the parable of the sower, and it's really tied to the Word of God, where we have an expectation for the Word of God. The series is, is entitled, Expecting the Word to Work, and this is part 25. The title of today's message is, The Deceitfulness of Riches. As a believer, you got to protect your heart from pursuing money over pursuing God because the pursuit of money is deceitful. And uh, that's what we'll deal with on today. We've been studying the third type of ground and the four types of ground in the parable of the sower. This is the thorny ground. This is what Jesus said about the thorny ground. He said, our lives. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Other people are like the seed that is planted amongst thorny weeds. Now, these people, they hear the word of God. They hear the teaching, but their lives become full of other things. Jesus gives us three categories for the other things. He says, it's the cares of this world, the love of money and everything else they want. And these things, these other things, their heart, their lives are so full of these other things that these other things grow up and choke out the word. They keep the word from working. So the word of God that has the power to change you actually does not change you because your heart and your life is full of other things. In the, the message yesterday at the end, I shared something that I didn't really kind of plan on sharing. It wasn't in the written form of today's word. And so today I included that in the written form. And I'm just going to kind of mention it here briefly because it lines up with with the message today. But I shared how sometimes you can have a traumatic event um, where money is concerned and that you make a decision in the middle of that pain that money is not going to be an issue for you. And then from that moment, you, you live your, the rest of your life in the pursuit of money. And so for me, it was when I was 11 years old, I was robbed at gun, gunpoint. Um, a group of teenagers on a, a New York City public bus put a, a 357 Magnum to my head and they stole my blue and white suede Adidas. I was in, in sixth grade, beginning of the sixth grade. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had to t- then take another bus on Pickett Avenue. I had to get off of that bus wait for another bus. I went into this mama's fried chicken. I still remember because I mean, it was a traumatic event, right? It was a significant emotional event. So I had to go into this mama's fried chicken. I was trying to hide the fact that I didn't have any shoes on. I put my book, my, my book bag in front of my, my socks and stuff. And then I had to go back outside, get on a, on a bus again. And, um, when I was getting on the bus, get on another bus to go to my neighborhood, I actually, um, stepped on somebody's, uh, shoes. And back then, that was a big deal. So when I stepped on his shoes, this guy got mad. He was like, yo, what's wrong with you? And then when he looked down, he saw that I had socks on. And obviously, it was obvious that I had been robbed. And so I'm 11 years old. And then on the bus, in front of everybody, he says, oh, yo, shorty got ganked. Shorty got ganked. And so then the whole bus starts laughing at me. I'm 11, right? So I mean, obviously, that was painful. But let me tell you something. And then I had to get off the bus and walk to my apartment building. And then... Uh, and so walking outside with no shoes on in New York, you know, obviously it was obvious what, what happened. So, so all of that was traumatic. I got it. But let me tell you what hurt me the most. The gun didn't hurt me the most. People laughing at me, laughing at me on the bus didn't hurt me the most. What hurt me, and I still, even when I was sharing this yesterday, I, I still feel the pain. And I'm 45 years old. I mean, uh, what hurt me the most was me having to tell my mother that I didn't have the shoes anymore. And I knew that I only got one pair of sneakers for the whole year, and that's all she could afford. She's a, I was raised uh, uh, by a single parent, a factory worker, and, uh, and that's what hurt me the most. Those sneakers cost $23, and I remember those $23. And, and my mother somehow got the money. She got me another pair of sneakers. I don't know how she did it, but she did. And, uh, and, and so I've lived my life from that moment, you know, first of all, saying I'm going to honor my mother financially, which I do. But I also, from that moment, said, you know what, this, this is not going to happen again. In the moment of that pain, I said, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to make sure my mother doesn't have to worry about my sneakers. So from the time I was 13, I've been working and uh, I took care of my, my sneakers. I took care of my clothes from the time I was 13 years old. And uh, from that day to this day, I've been working hard uh, for the rest of my life. Now, there was a time in my life where I was working hard, focused on money because of that traumatic event. Now I'm, I'm working hard, focused on my purpose. But my point in that is that Sometimes a traumatic event happens like that. So maybe 
for you, like me, being raised the way I was raised, I was raised on welfare, public assistance, in a in a in a economically challenged environment. Twenty three dollars was a big deal, but maybe for somebody else, it wasn't that. It was like their lights got cut off. And as a kid, you know, some I've heard people talk about, man, my, my lights got cut off, and I remember having to do this. We didn't have any hot water, and I made a I made a decision right then and there that money was not going to be an issue for me. Or maybe they didn't have food to eat. Or maybe uh, it was they got evicted. I remember somebody telling me that they walked up to the to their uh, uh, apartment and and you know they saw the eviction notice and and their stuff was thrown out outside and they had to pick up their clothes and and then try to figure out what they were going to do with their mom and all that kind of thing. And they said from that moment, Rick, I, I made a decision. Money would never be an issue for me. And see, and 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 it's okay to to want to be able to be self-sufficient. It's okay to want to be able to, to know that money is not gonna be an issue for you. I've got it, but in that moment of pain, if you make that decision, and then you live the rest of your life with that, and now you're born again, and you're still living that way, that's a problem. That's a problem, because now you're pursuing money with, with an unrighteous motivation, where God is now your source, and you have to, once you're born again, everything's new, everything changes. So you gotta know that God is your source, and you have to look at things from that perspective. And if you're, if you're still pursuing money, uh, with, with the wrong perspective, then it can really mess up your life and mess up your priorities and everything. And, and so when I shared yesterday's message, uh, someone shared this with me. Uh, one of the responses that I got uh, was this. The person said, Rick, thank you for sharing that last part. It brought me to tears and it really touched me. I lost almost all my savings, my investments, my job. I almost lost, I'm sorry, my savings, my investments, my job, and even my marriage, primarily because of the pursuit of money. I'm changing that around. I'm rethinking everything. I'm pursuing God first now. I'm putting his word first place and I'm trying to be led by the Holy Spirit and your ministry is helping with that transformation. Thank you so much for the word. God bless. It's, it's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. People have ruined their lives in the pursuit of money and it's deceitful. In this passage from Mark 4, I, read, I, I always share it with you from the easy to read version where it's the love of money, um, you know, where you're pursuing the love of money and everything else you want. But the King James Version calls it the deceitfulness of riches. There's the pursuit of riches is deceitful. There is this, there's this deceitful nature to the pursuit of riches, which is what I'll talk about today. Um, I don't have that much time left. I have three things to share with you on this Friday morning so we could close out the week strong and head into the weekend strong. Look at me for a minute. Let me just share these three th things with you. I believe they're going to be a blessing. You ready? Here we go. Number one, the love of money is deceitful. I've said it. I'm saying it again. Pursuing money over pursuing God is just not worth it. The endless pursuit of money often causes people to wind up with money and then realize that they lost everything along the way. Everything that matters, they lost. Pursuing money, that's crazy. People have lost their families, their integrity, and even their health in this tireless pursuit of money. Jesus wants to ask the question, <laughs> what would it profit a man? If he could even gain the whole world but then lose his soul in the process. What good would money be? Look at me, look at me. Money is, I mean, believe me, having money or not having money, having money is better than not having money, right? I was raised poor, I know that, right? So that's not, the, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying being broke is poor. But what, I'm, what I am saying though is that what good would the money be if you lost everything that mattered in the process? If you pursue God instead of pursuing money, God can see to it that you have money. That's okay. God is not against you having money. God just doesn't want you to lose your relationship, to lose yourself, to lose your purpose, and to lose your God in the process of chasing a dollar. That's crazy. Number two, don't put your trust in money. Put your trust in God. Solomon said the wise. Now, Solomon was the wisest man and the richest man in the world, right? So we can learn from him. This is what he said in Proverbs eleven twenty-eight: 28. Those who trust in their riches will fall like dead leaves. But the righteous will prosper like the leaves of the summer. In Mark 4 and 19, once again, Jesus said, going back to this thorny ground, um, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust for other things are choking out the word. There's, riches are deceitful. The word deceitful, uh, uh, another word that kind of lines up with that word is the word untrustworthy. See, that's really the message that, that Solomon is teaching. His point is a point about trust. If you're going to put your trust in money, you're going to be deceived. If you put your trust in God, you're going to be okay. And so Solomon is just plain text with it. He doesn't even cut any corners. He says, man, if you put your trust in money, then you're going to find that you're going to fall like dead leaves. People who put their trust in money fall like dead leaves. What's a dead leaf? Well, at one point, 
the leaf was prospering. At one point, the leaf was connected to the vine. At one point, the leaf was healthy and strong. But when you put your, your trust in the wrong place, that thing falls. When you cut yourself off from God, when you cut yourself off from, from focusing on God instead of, I mean, focusing on money instead of focusing on God, at that point, once you shift it, then you're going to fall like a dead leaf. There was a time when you were connected. There was a time where Solomon says the, the righteous are prospering like the leaves of the summer that, that has a constant supply of what it needs. It's getting water, it's getting sun, it's, it's connected to the source. That's how you want to live. You don't want to fall like a dead leaf because you pursued money. You want to thrive in this world. You can become the man, the woman that God calls you to be. You can leave a mark in this world that will not be erased, but you can't do it chasing money. You can't chase money over chasing God. Number three, and finally, you must make your choice between serving God and serving money. That's it. God is not opposed to you having money. God is opposed to money having you. If you have a proper relationship with money, then God can give you loads of it. Let me say that again. If you have a proper relationship with God and with money, then God can give you loads of money. God is not opposed to you having money. God is just opposed to money having you. Money can ruin you if you don't have a right, right relationship with it. In Matthew 6 and 4, Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and money. Can't happen. You just can't do it. You cannot serve both God and money. Either God is going to be your Lord or money is going to be your Lord. Which one are you going to do? If you, if you make the pursuit of money the major pursuit of your life, you're going to be deceived. You're going to wake up one morning and one or two things are going to happen. And I'll close with this. Either you don't get the money and you spent all your life pursuing it and you lost everybody and everything that, was, that mattered in the process. Or here's what's even worse. Or you wake up one, month, one morning and you have the money. You have the house, you want it, you have the cars in the driveway, um, you have the money in the bank account, you can go anywhere in the world, and then you realize that none of that made you happy. And that's even worse. This is where people commit suicide. This is where people de delve into depression. Where, where you spent all your life chasing something that you thought was going to make you happy, and now you have it and, and it doesn't make you happy. Because you were chasing the wrong thing. You cannot make money your Lord and then expect to maximize your purpose and potential. Please don't do that. Make God your Lord. He can give you money. Believe me. He can give you money. Money is not an issue for God. He sits. He owns everything. He can give you money. But don't make money your Lord. Make Jesus your Lord. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I, I, I already went long, so let's close this out. Hurry up real quick. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. My expectation is tied to your word. Your word teaches me to make you my number one priority. So I give you first place in every area of my life. And this includes my finances. I don't love money. I love you. I don't pursue money. I pursue you. I don't place my trust in money. I place my trust in you. Now, living this way, I position myself to receive your best. You can bless me financially because I am focused on doing whatever you tell me to do with the money you place in my hands. You are my Lord, so I never have a fear of running out. I actually have faith in running over. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, come on. Go to todaysword.org. There's a big subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. If you don't have the, the Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries app, download the app. It's in every app store. Search for Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries or just Rick and Isabella or Rick Pena or whatever. You'll find it. Download the app. Let it be a blessing to you. Um, you know, all, all, everything that we share is free. We, we just want to put the word in your hands and put the word in your heart so that you can become the man, the woman that God has called you to be. As you head into this day and head into this weekend, I want you to do two things. Number one, make a decision right now that you are never going to pursue money over pursuing God. And number two, share this message with someone that you know so that it could be a, a blessing to them as well. What we want is just for the church to be the church, for us to be light and salt, for us to change the world. And, and for us to live as Jesus is in this world. I love you. More importantly, God loves you. Have a blessed weekend. God bless you.